Okay, uh, welcome to another rendition of Road to Recovery. Today I'm here with Liz Elam. She is the founder of GCUC, which is also known as Juicy. Um, it is a co-working community um, that's definitely focused on technology, real estate, uh, wellness, and of course, um, co-working. Uh, so we're really happy to have her here today. Um, maybe Liz, if you want to go ahead and, and introduce yourself a little bit further and, and give us an idea of, uh, you know, how you got started with Juicy and how it became what it is today. Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm coming to you from Austin, Texas, where I live. And it's also where I started a co-working space in 2010. I um, grew that space to three locations, and last year I sold it to a competitor and a friend. And <laughs> so I was probably, I think, the first female to successfully um, exit co-working in the world. Um, in 2011, I was um, at a unconference here in Austin, Texas, close to South by Southwest, and I um, attended the event and I really enjoyed it. And I helped the operators find some of the sponsors. And that summer of 2011, they called me and they said, wow, you seem super into this. Would you like to take it over? And I was like, yes. So I renamed it the Global mm -hmm. Coworking and Conference Conference, which is GCUC. And I call it Juicy. And with a vision for it becoming a global conference. And today we are. We've done over 30 conferences worldwide. We're in China, we're in the UK, we're in Australia, we're in Canada, we're all over the place. And um, we've also pivoted into more of a community. We have membership now. And recently, thanks to a global pandemic, we've started doing a ton of online events. Mm -hmm. So um, we just, have done an unconference, we've done a conference, we've done countless webinars. I think I am, in the last month we reached um, almost 3,000 people with our online events. So we're just really busy supporting the community as they're kind of in crisis mode right now. No, absolutely. And that, that's a, a good place to segue then. And of course, another reason that we're interested in speaking with you, because you do have your finger on the pulse. You're talking to lots and lots of, um, you know, co-working operators, uh, mm -hmm. again, around the world on a, a global scale. Um, what have people been uh, coming to you with? Like, what are the concerns? What are the, the common oh, wow. topics and, and things that, uh, you know, you're kind of dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis, like the fears as well as, mm. um, you know, the excitement and, and hope that's coming out of all this? Yeah, I think, you know, top of mind for most operators, it's, it kind of changes from week to week. You know, the first week it was very focused on, oh my gosh, when is Juicy? What's happening with Juicy? And that wasn't just me. That was more the community because we had to move the conference. That's our big U.S. conference, which is currently stated, um, slated for July. And then it turned into, oh my gosh, how do I support my community virtually? Mm -hmm. And then it really kind of went into, okay, what am I going to do about money? And then it went into, in the U.S. anyways, lots of um, freaking out about SBA and how to fill out forms. And, and now it's starting to change. Now um, I think you can go to one of 15 webinars about how to reopen your space post-COVID. Um, and there's a lot of of uh, talk around cleaning procedures and physical distancing and all of the things around reopening your space. You know, do I need a, a thermostat, you know, not a thermostat, a thermometer? Mm -hmm. um, do I need to shoot all my members through the glass and see if I can let them in or not? So just a lot of um, fear and anxiety around what does that look like and what do I need to do to my space? Um, in addition to that, I think the thing that's um, probably surprised me the most is there's a huge demand to talk about marketing, mm -hmm. um, you know, as far as how does my marketing need to change? Um, what is different from, you know, two months ago to now in my marketing? Because you are really marketing to a different group now because it's the corporates that are coming and come back first. Mm -hmm. It's not really the small businesses and the freelancers are going to hang at home for a little bit longer. Um, but I think, you know, the, the silver lining to all of this and the thing I've been talking about since this started is that there is a silver lining. And that is that the entire world has figured out they can work from home. They've also figured out that it's not ideal. 
that there's lots of distractions. And if there aren't lots of distractions, there's lots of loneliness. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people not only need a community, they deserve a community and they have to have a community. And so people are excited to get back. People want to go to their office. They want to go to their co-working space. They want to get out of their house. Um, so I think, you know, lots of new people are going to discover our industry. In addition to that, you know, the CEO of Barclays just came out um, last week and said, I'm never putting 7,000 employees in one building again. And that's just an indicator of another thing we've been talking about for over, you know, a month and a half, which is companies are going to have to geographically diversify, which is actually really good news for rural and suburban co-working mm -hmm. because they're going to be looking for places closer to where they live. So, um, you know, once you, it's, it's a really hard time and it's going to be hard for a few months, but if you can survive, you have a huge opportunity to thrive post COVID. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's really interesting. And it's, uh, it's a nice uh, topic that you brought up about the rural co-working as well. And mm -hmm. of course we do have a lot of these spaces um, that are a part of the Upflex network that I'm sure are mm -hmm. part of your, your membership and network as well. Um, and I think they're getting hit the hardest, of course, from, um, mm -hmm. from this, this pandemic. Now with that, are they coming to you trying to find out a lot of what they can do in order to make their space a little bit more accommodating, um, whether it be for health and safety, or if it's for, um, you know, maybe you're going to have to space people out or, or whatever it is that the protocols are that a lot of people are going to start enforcing while they're opening, reopening. Do you find that a lot of, of these rural spaces are coming to you and, and trying to get that information or is that they're going to apply that? I don't think it's specifically rural focused. I think it's everybody. Everybody is trying to figure out what they need to do. Um, one of the things we're advising is that you not invest a lot of money and changing the physical design of your space mm -hmm. and think more about, you know, walk through it with the, the lens of a six foot radius mm -hmm. and really think about like, do I need to put things on my floor to show people what six feet looks like? Um, you know, everybody should be posting cleaning procedures. Um, everybody needs to be thinking about what is their cleaning strategy um, what are the members' responsibilities? How often do you need to clean your meeting rooms? How often do you need to clean your conference rooms? Do you need to take out chairs? Do you need to space out desks? Um, are there new procedures you need in the bathroom? Should you be changing your air conditioning settings? Mm -hmm. So there's mm -hmm. just, you know, you've just got to look at your business through a completely different lens because it, you've got to look through your business from the, you know, safety and cleanliness. And in addition to that, you know, the other thing we always advise is look to your state and um, your local and state and national government um, to see what their requirements are. Because like here in Austin, there's a whole set just for Austin. And mm -hmm. then Texas has a set. And then the U.S. has a set. And then the CDC has a set. So there's, there's just a lot of things you need to be looking at right now. No, that, that makes a lot of sense. And, and I think people are, you know, they're trying to do their best to adapt to it. And, and I have been talking to like some of the smaller players and they have expressed, uh, you know, how are we going to adapt to this and, and allow people to come back into our space? Because some of these places are very unique. They might be um, buildings that are heritage buildings, things like that, that cannot mm -hmm. be renovated, like you said. Um, and they can't really adjust for the, these spatial um, situations, um, or if they do, it's not going to be construction oriented, right? Um, which it doesn't necessarily need to be. Maybe they just need mm -hmm. to add a little bit more space to their desks and make sure that they are, um, you know, communicating this type of information to their members. Now, well, and I think the yeah. other thing that a lot of people are talking about, the corporations are phasing people back in mm -hmm. and a new responsibility for a lot of co-working operators that they need to think about is scheduling. Yeah. So, you know, it might be that, you know, you need to have, like in, the, in Austin right now, you can only have 25% of your membership in your space. Right. How are you going to manage that? You know, what if somebody comes in and says, hey, I want half of my team to come in Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and the other half to come in on Tuesday, Thursday. Can you help me with that? Mm -hmm. So you've got to really be thinking through, like, what are the scheduling and the phasing um, and how is that going to affect your business? No, absolutely. So 
with all of this being said and, and what we're talking about here, do you think this might all be for nothing? Like at the end of the day, once we actually get back to our real life, which might mm -hmm. be in a year, a year and a half from now, mm -hmm. um, do you think mm -hmm. all of this is still going to be relevant? And do you think people are going to have to mm -hmm. adhere to all these rules? Um, maybe this is a short term thing, right? Um, what are your thoughts mm -hmm. on that? You know, it's so interesting. I love that question. No one's asked me that before, but I have lots of thoughts about it. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of things. One is, I think that the good news is, is that work has changed forever. And that's a good thing. The way we were working and the way we were driving ourselves was not working. Um, you know, we have a full on global mental health crisis. Mm -hmm. And that's because of the way we spend the majority of our day. And that's working. Right. So it's fantastic because the world of work is changing. And that's a good thing. In addition to that, you know, pandemic wise, um, you know, will people kind of have a little bit of a forgetter in August when there aren't as many cases and, you know, they all start hugging everybody? I think that's kind of likely. I think mm -hmm. people are, we're super scared, but I think it will quickly leave front of mind. Um, and I've asked a couple of people that and they're like, oh no, you are wrong. This is like, I'm not hugging anybody for a long time. So I think, I think it's going to be interesting. Um, I don't think we'll fully go back to um, a post-pandemic world for a very long time. It'll definitely mm -hmm. be after there is a, um, oh gosh, what's it a called? vaccine, maybe you're going <laughs> to Yes, <say>? yeah. <laughs> yes, after there's a vaccine. Mm -hmm. um, it, it still won't go back to normal because here's the thing. We don't know when the next pandemic's coming. Mm -hmm. So what this is going to do is it's going to force us all to really look at what is your plan when there's a black swan, which is what these are called. It's this unexpected event that you can't plan for. Mm -hmm. So I think it's going to change a lot of um, business planning. Mm -hmm. um, I think work is going to completely change, which is a good thing. Um, and, you know, I think that this is going to affect everything going forward. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so let's talk about Juicy then and, and what you mm -hmm. guys are hoping to accomplish in the next few mm -hmm. months or where you're headed, any kind of upcoming events that, that are mm -hmm. going on um, and what you're also doing to continue to help the community. Yeah. You know what? Um, it's interesting. The um, pandemic made us really quickly look at our business and say, you know, what's our role? And I think it, this has always been our role, but I think it became very crystal clear that our role is to support our community. And we got up every day and thought about what can I do today to support my community? And it was really clear that our people were in crisis management and that they needed support and that they needed hope and they needed strength. And so we just pivoted very quickly to online events. We executed an amazing unconference in record time and just learned Zoom, like taking a drink out of a fire hose. <laughs> and um, then we also, the day that Juicy would have taken place in April in Seattle, um, we gave all of our ticket holders a free online conference. And then we also sold tickets to it at a completely reasonable price. It was a great event very well received. In addition to that, we're doing webinars now all over the world. Um, we've got this one, we've got two in the UK this week. We've got one in Australia this week. Um, I'm in the process of setting up a Asia specific event. And so not only are we supporting our team and our um, community in the US and Canada, but we're also globally supporting. And you know, on some of those conferences, we had huge international crowds on them. We've got mm -hmm. people from Colombia and people from Pakistan and people from China and people from New Zealand. And so, you know, our role is to support the global community and help them get the tools and the information they need to make the best business decisions so that they can survive this. That's amazing. And uh, yeah, we just, we want to thank you for all the, the work that you're putting in. Um, I know it's a lot and you guys do have a lot of responsibility, especially being um, accessible virtually. 
um, and again, keeping this this group of people together and supported. So yeah, on behalf of Upflex, we want to thank you for all the work you're oh, doing. Oh, thank you. Yeah, well, thank and you. I really appreciate it. Yeah, and and let's stay in touch. We'd like to follow your journey, and of course, if um, if you have any uh, thing that you want to promote at the end here, you're welcome to do that, and we can also post it in the blog at the end. Any kind of information that you want to share? Oh, thank you. I think mm -hmm. the main thing is is if you want to be connected to a community that's here to support you, um, just go to juicy.co and that's gcuc.co. We have an online community. We have in-person events. We have online events. We have 24 seven access. We're here for you. Amazing. Liz, thank you so much. And thank we'll you. stay in touch and all the best moving forward. Thank you. Have a great day. You too.